So the big question now is, how am I going to explain how Sarah Ann ended up sunk up to her gunnels in the Malula River? It all began with a dark and stormy crossing of the Bass Strait. But Sarah Ann was tucked away safely in the hold of the Spirit of Tasmania. She safely came through a 2,000 kilometre road trip up to the Sunshine Coast. But how did she sink? It's been a couple of months since I've had an opportunity to sit down and put a video together. Uh, I've shot a lot of footage over those last couple of months. An enormous amount has happened. We made a decision to come back to Tasmania after 13 years on the Sunshine Coast. We had some health issues in the family and we decided it was a good time to get back to family and friends. Our uh, daughter and son-in-law have built a beautiful little unit for us up here on Trevallon overlooking the Tama River. And um, so we felt it was a good time to go back. Um, around about that time, it was about three months ago now, um, Sarah Ann came into my life. Um, if you've been watching the earlier videos, you'll know that Sarah Ann is a Tasmanian boat with quite a bit of history um, linked to uh, family and friends. I had been talking about coming back to Tassie to do a video series in Moonlight and uh, once we had Sarah Ann, we decided to hand Moonlight over to our grandchildren. Uh, there was quite a lot of work that I needed to do to make her roadworthy, uh, let alone seaworthy. I had been trying to get her in the water before we came back down, but as it's turned out, she's done a complete loop from uh, Riverside in Tasmania all the way up to the Sunshine Coast. Sarah Ann's back to just a very short distance away from where she was built. Now this video covers um, fixing up her hull inside and out and making her watertight and also fitting the engine. Most recently I've been working on the wet exhaust system which is about I'm about 75% of the way through having that ready to go. This was the only time that Sarah Ann found herself in the water in Queensland. Some time back concrete was poured into the bilge as a form of ballast. That combined with the fact that Sarah Ann hadn't been in the water for about 12 years caused a bit of shrinking down around the bilge. It was thought by the previous owner that sinking her would be a way of swelling up her timbers and that's true. That kind of thinking is correct for a carvel boat or for a clinker boat that needs to take up. But it's not the right approach for an edge glued strip plank boat. So she's been repaired below the waterline inside and out with some thickened epoxy. The tabernacle was painted canvas which has deteriorated over the years so I replaced that with glass and gave it the epoxy treatment as well. The majority of the canvas over the timber was in extremely good condition. It just needed a few little pockets where I injected a bit of epoxy and there was some crazing in the old paint which is not to be um, unexpected after 50 years and most of the time out of the water. So the deck um, and particularly around the tabernacle has all been spread filled with epoxy and then painted with an epoxy primer. I'm going to a great deal of trouble to make sure that no moisture whatsoever can get in there and given that she's stored on a trailer and not moored then it's not going to be an issue with moisture getting in un underneath the epoxy. The inside of the boat is left with um, painted with traditional oil based paint mainly. So I worked some thickened epoxy into some of the cracks below the waterline. I wasn't too concerned about it getting it right in there. I didn't want to route it out and spline it and glue it. But I've worked it in a couple of mills which still allows a little bit of room for the timber to move. For the most part she's got plenty of room still to breathe. And if it cracks again in the lower humidity down in Tassie, well, it's not that big a deal just to come back and touch it up. An interesting thing is that I did experiment in a couple of places with a little bit of flexible sealant along some of the joints where they'd opened up. The planks opened up again where I'd used the polyurethane sealant, but where I used the epoxy, they've held tight. I painted the inside of the bilge over my repairs with good old fashioned Epotech epoxy primer. Next it was time to turn my attention to the inside of the boat which uh, had a lot of the uh, internal cabinetry had been pulled out. 
and I wanted to reinstall that more because it was easier to store it there than it was to carry it separately inside the boat. remember the story of Denise's hewn pine bed, which she very generously donated to the wooden boating course. See here, I'm fitting a floor uh, at the aft end of the motor. Uh, she was a bit light on in that area, and I was concerned about with the big, uh, heavier diesel, diesel there that it might be transferring some loads um, to the hull. into the boat was a bit of an ordeal or at least it was more like an ordeal of uh, thinking but no action for a long time there and then eventually I built a simple little gantry over the boat and uh, worked beautifully. The thing only weighs about 130 kilos so I was making the problem bigger than it was. The guys at Polyflex were just absolutely awesome. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way, but uh, just wanted to give them a plug because I'm so impressed with the quality of the product that they supplied and the advice that they supplied. So uh, uh, the issue was that there wasn't much room to play with and I had to get a very low profile mount. And we managed to get some about 32 mil, which meant I only had to um, reduce the bearers by about 12 mil. The exhaust for the little Volvo MD1 was also something that caused me a few uh, sleepless nights thinking it through and looking at all the different options. And uh, I could have gone simple, 
Um, but I decided to go complicated, which is often my way, and I went for a wet exhaust system. I did want to keep the boat cool in summer, and there's a lot of heat obviously generated um, from the exhaust, but the other thing is I just like the way they sound. I'm guessing that the fittings had never been taken apart for the 50 year uh, life of this MD1 Volvo. I tried heat at first, but the mappy gas wasn't enough to uh, move it. So uh, in the end, I just ground it out with a die grinder and uh, crushed it in the vise. And fortunately, it decided it was going to uh, let go. As you can see, I haven't quite finished unpacking all the, all the uh, moving boxes yet, but um, I'm dead keen to get this boat in the water. So uh, just started work on the wet exhaust. Uh, I guess you have a friend that uh, gave me a few techniques. I've managed to remove this galvanised elbow, which is still in pretty good nick, but the galvanised stuff you buy these days is absolutely rubbish. I looked at a lot of uh, different configurations, and this is the one that I came up with in the end. Very fortunate to have Tamer Marine just at the bottom of the hill, um, near the tail race that I talked about earlier, and um, They've got such a good range of everything uh, that you can just get everything in the one-stop shop. So I'm making up a mixing elbow using stainless elbows and then it runs downhill to a water lock. Um, I've put a new strainer on there because the one that was on there had corroded. And naturally we're to expect a bit of inclement weather from time to time. The, um, the carport that uh, I've got the boat under is exposed to the southwest, so I've put up a bit of a uh, screen there. I went uh, for a bit of a stroll around the upper reaches of the Tamar River estuary and just uh, to give you a bit of an idea of where I am, about 50 kilometres inland, a uh, massive long estuary running from Bass Strait all the way to the, the city of Launceston. Thanks for watching this far and um, hope to see you soon. Um, I'll be uh, documenting the rest of the restoration of Sarah Ann and as always I'm hoping to get her in the water soon. Yeah.